and with blood and guns come money, big money. Republican Senator from Ohio Mark Hanna is quoted to have said in the late 19th century that there are two things that are important in politics. The first is money, and I can't remember what the second one is. What happens when a congressional representative gets elected? Uh, first day in office, they start making phone calls to the potential donors for the next election coming up. Out of that comes legislation, which the representative later signs, maybe even looks at occasionally. I wonder if he can get off the phone to the donors. Uh, what do you think? What kind of system do you expect to emerge from this? But in recent times, clearly, the United States is not functioning as a democracy. It is functioning as a plutocracy. And the sky is the limit. The total cost of 2022 state and federal midterm elections reached over 16.7 billion US dollars, setting a new record. That's more than the combined GDP of over 70 countries in the world in 2021. Big money aside, are the voices of ordinary Americans being heard? One person, one vote sounds like a nice idea, but does it really make a difference? It has become increasingly obvious over the past decades that voting for the Democrats or the Republicans is mostly about choosing between the devil and the deep blue sea or being caught between Scylla and Charybdis. Public trust in the U.S. Congress has reached an all-time low, with a miserly 7% of Americans expressing a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in the institution, according to a Gallup poll released in the summer of 2022. U.S. House speakership, which ended with Kevin McCarthy's winning after 15 rounds of voting, might reveal the true nature of party politics, that is, political stalemate. Unfortunately, I don't see either of the two dominant political parties being able or willing to change that, largely because they're funded by many of the same powerful economic interests that benefit from these policies. As a result, government shutdowns have become a seasonal nightmare. From December 2018 to January 2019, the U.S. government has been shut down for 35 days, the longest period in history. The genes of America's democracy have been further corrupted with dodgy practices. They have exotic names, gerrymandering, filibuster and carpetbagger, to name but a few. One person, one vote has become a hall of mirrors. And to cap it all, you have the media, including social media, which put a nice spin on the fairy tale. In the United States, the media is considered the fourth estate or gatekeeper of democracy. But in fact, they've always served financial interests and party politics. And since the Trump presidency, things got worse. After Pulitzer Prize-winning American journalist Seymour Hersh broke the story that the U.S. could be behind the Nord Stream pipeline explosions, there was deafening silence on the mainstream liberal media in the U.S. Hersh was dismissed as uncredible for citing one single source, albeit with direct knowledge to the operational planning. I think the Trump years really terrified the American liberals and the left, if you will. They, they were ter terrified. And you had a situation where there was Fox News on one side and the New York Post, conservative papers favorable to Trump, and the rest were absolutely against anything, uh, all things Trump. And I think that the, the fallout is now they have a Democrat uh, who largely won because he wasn't Trump. It's not because they're attacking me because of me and the source, they're attacking me because of what the story says. If I wrote a single source say about something wonderful that happened in the Biden administration that nobody knew about, I wouldn't be attacked. <laughs> it would be all over the paper. We don't have a well-informed citizenry now. It's hard for them to believe that they would manufacture evidence 20 years ago to justify, in quotes, a war of aggression. So we're left again with the American people at the mercy of people on CNN, people on all the other uh, network as well as cable um, uh, broadcast and other 
networks. They are, have a 2,000 year plan to destroy this country. And it's not just on TV. While touting freedom of expression and speech, the U.S. government also seeks to control international public opinion through manipulating social media. According to The Intercept, U.S. Department of Defense has used Twitter, which includes U.S. government-generated news portals and memes, to wrong its online influence campaign to shape opinions in Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Kuwait, and beyond. Since the war broke out in Ukraine, public discussion on mainstream media was far from being free and balanced. I have not in my years seen this simplification, this banalization of something hugely complex as has gone on the last year or the last uh, right. eight, nine years concerning Ukraine. I have never seen so much lying and so much one-sidedness and so little intellectual input in what is reported. 